Well, I see we have some early birds here. Welcome. If you can throw into the chat um, what job you're trying to get into tech, please, so I can see who's in this space. Um, and you can start your networking, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mario, for being bold and putting yourself out there first. Fabulous. I'll be talking a lot about software engineering and apprenticeships today and other kinds of apprenticeships also. Great. Thank you, Carolina. And if you're here from a company, if you can share what positions you're looking to hire also. I know it's not easy to put yourself out there, but we have to get uncomfortable. We have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable even when we're networking behind the screen. So thank you. Welcome, Usha. Thank you. All right, folks, check it out. Usha has an announcement there about McKinsey hiring for software engineers and tech. And Usha, if McKinsey wants to set up an apprenticeship program, please feel free to reach out. Let's get this networking happening, get people employed right now and web development, fabulous. All right, so we are at time. So let's get started here. Um, in the chat, if you could please enter what job are you looking for to get into tech um, as i said before we need to start putting ourselves out there you don't know who's in the space certainly can't see them now so please please uh, put it out into the universe what kind of jobs uh, you're looking for in tech we need to get comfortable with this um, we need to start networking i know it's super nerve-wracking and anxiety producing but let's practice right now the more you do it the easier it becomes um, so get out there and companies put out who you're looking to hire. So we have some great candidates here at the Uh So we're going to get started here with this workshop, which is called Aprentique. Um, I'm going to be talking about the secret to break into tech. So I will be talking about all different kinds of apprenticeships, not just soft for software engineers and how to break into the industry. My name is Odette Nemes. I am the head of growth at OnRamp. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you quite a bit about my personal experience and my journey. So bear with me here. Um, I want you to prepare yourself, as we say in Spanish, preparense. It's going to get personal for me in here. Um, I didn't feel like I could do this presentation um, without honoring my history, who I am, and the position that I'm in today. You know, I'm honored to be here presenting and to share my story and to share all things apprentices with you. And um, it's all really incredibly relevant to how I got into tech. So first and foremost, I check a lot of boxes. Um, I was born in Puerto Rico. I moved to the States when I was five. Um, I am a lesbian and I am also a single mom. Um, my journey actually started, I applied to Duke. I got into the engineering school. Um, and I just, I got in there, but I didn't feel connected. You know, I was always the only Latina in the space. As far as I could tell, the only lesbian in the space. Um, and sometimes the only woman. And it was really isolating, really disconnected. And I couldn't understand um, how it was relevant to anything in life and my experiences. I didn't have any mentors or any kind of community. So I actually ended up transferring out of the engineering school. Um, and I graduated from Duke with a psych degree. So that did not work out the way that it was planned. Um, so when I graduated, I decided 
to get into the nonprofit world. Um, it led me to getting a job at Girls Inc. where I was working with girls of color um, to inspire all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. And my job was really to expose these girls of color um, to STEM careers. And I wanted to make sure that they understood that they belonged, right? To get as many people of color into engineering so they wouldn't be an only. I didn't want them to feel like I did. I didn't want anybody to change majors, to leave a job because they didn't feel like they belonged, right? To me, that's an incredible waste of potential. Um, so I worked in programs, I worked with corporate groups. Um, 15 years ago now, I helped develop a curriculum to teach H girls um, across the country HTML. It was super cutting edge then. Um, not anymore, but you know, this was, <laughs> now Now it's the trend that everybody wants to do, but you know, back in the day, it was a big deal. Um, and after doing programming for 10 years, I moved into fundraising and, and that's really, you know, I acquired a lot of skills that were very transferable into tech there also. So I ended up, um, I had a kid, Camila is my oldest. She's there with the uh, overalls on. Um, when she turned one, um, my plan was to leave work and spend some time uh, home with her, have a second kid. Um, so I had Lucas, who's in there in the picture too. And after I had Lucas, you know, I was ready. I was like, oh, this job is way harder than getting paid. Um, and I was ready to get back into work and I was looking for work and I was getting into final interviews. Things were looking really good. And then the pandemic hit um, and my kids school closed. So they had nowhere to go. I had to stay home with them all day. And then nobody was hiring on top of it. Um, so I dug into staying home and actually uh, my marriage fell apart. So here I was in the middle of the pandemic, uh, getting a divorce staying at home, unemployed with two little kids and out of work for three years. Um, and now actually it really forced my hand. I needed to find a job where I could pay my mortgage. I'm based out of Oakland in the Bay Area, super expensive. And I had to be able to support my family on my own. Um, so my options were limited. It was super stressful. And I saw the only way that, you know, I was gonna be able to do this to take care of my kids and to take care of my house and everything was to get into tech. Um, so yeah, I had to figure this out. This was it, this was the new plan. Um, so the way that I did that is I reached out to everybody in my network and really, I mean, everybody, folks I hadn't talked to in 10 years, people I played in uh, gay basketball leagues in New York City, people I can barely remember their names, um, just everybody, everybody to put myself out there. And, you know, I was, really trying to get all the help I could get. Some people ignored me, for sure. A lot of people ignored me and some people responded. Um, and you know, when my kids slept, I was working on drafts of my cover letters and my resumes and my family and my friends were tearing it up. And really I was trying to figure out, okay, what were all these skills um, that I acquired at Girls Inc. That in the nonprofit world that were transferable? And I was thinking, okay, um, let's see, I did work in, DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion for sure. Um, I've done work in corporate social responsibility or CSR as it's called in the industry. Um, I've certainly done sales, right? I've been selling uh, Girls Inc, trying to get girls into programs, selling um, funders to try to invest in it. I've done plenty of customer success, right? I've had people really upset with me all the time, families, girls, um, donors, and trying to ease things and make sure they're getting what they need. So to me, what I had acquired, these skills that I'd acquired were super relevant um, to the tech world. And I had to figure out how to translate that into the language that would be heard and understood um, and really valued in the tech world, I think is, is a huge deal. So eventually my schedule opened up a little bit. Thank goodness I didn't have my kids all day, every day. And I was able to get on Zoom and some calls and network and a uh, door started to open for me. Um, and, you know, it was just, it was incredible you know, how helpful and supportive and caring people are. Um, I think that, you know, as women of color, as Latinos, as folks of color, you can get really get caught up um, specifically as a woman of color and being a, a super woman, you know, and not asking for help. Um, and the bottom line is that you're just less likely to do it by yourself. And if you are gonna do it by yourself, it's just gonna take a whole lot longer. So there is a lot of strength um, in asking for help and, and getting out there and tapping into your network. So as um, this process was happening for me, um, I started landing interviews and moving along in the hiring process. And I reached out 
Um, to my girl, she's in the crowd, Jennifer Taship. I have to give her a shout out here. Um, she's all the way there on the far right on the slides. And she was a coworker of mine at Girls Inc. Um, and she actually transitioned into tech herself um, and got hundreds and hundreds of no's, right? This is a serious mover and shaker, a fellow single mom. Um, and she just knew how to do it and really mentored and sponsored me. And she was actually, she still is an advisory board member at OnRamp. And she was like, hey, oh, hey, you should check out this place. And I was like, what is she talking about? I've never heard of this place before. Um, and she told me about OnRamp and I started looking into it. Um, and I saw that, you know, this company helps diversify the technical work workforce and sets up apprenticeship programs um, at big companies like Twitch and Pandora and Plan. And I started learning more and I saw, wait a second, the founder and the CEO is a black woman of a startup in tech. Um, and I couldn't believe it. And the rest of the team also, they're underrepresented folks in tech. Like they're really practicing what, you, what they preach. Um, so I had to, you know, look into this and take this super seriously. And um, I applied um, and I got the job. And man, the universe aligned for me. It was, I still get emotional, think about it. Um, the week before my first day of work, my kids' daycare opened back up after being closed for a year. So it was like the universe just, just did me right um, in this moment. And I was able to really get into mission aligned work for me. You know, this was important for me after working at Girls Inc. for 12 years. I didn't really just want to work anywhere. I mean, I definitely needed a check to, to pay my mortgage, but I really wanted to be uh, mission aligned. And the program at OnRamp, I mean, this is amazing. Um, it was founded by, as I said, folks of color. They have transitioned into tech. They worked at boot camps, they worked at Google, they worked at startups, and they're really trying to solve for what is going on here? How are so many people graduating from boot camps or self-taught and they're still not getting hired? And there's so many companies out there saying, oh, we want diverse talent um, and we want people from all walks of life. And they have so many open positions and they're saying they can't find qualified folks. So the on-ramp team said, all right, we're gonna solve for this. Um, and they're solving it for specifically for software engineers and I'll get to other fields, don't worry. Um, in the presentation. So they decided that they're gonna create a platform. Um, if you're gonna leave my presentation now to go upskill or train, that's fine. It's at onramp.io um, and so you can do it later too. But basically onramp was working with companies saying, okay, what are skills that people really need to get a job there? And then they can come to our platform and train on that specifically. Um, cause they're finding that people who graduated from boot camps still had a gap in their learning specifically uh, to the technical skills specifically. And, um, that's how it was set up when we were setting up apprenticeship programs at different companies. Um, so folks really get the skills to be successful and to convert to full-time employees. We work with 75% um, of applicants are folks of color, 67% are women and 12 and a half percent are LGBTQ. So if you're looking, um, to be a software engineer, check it out, okay? Um, we're gonna be, fingers crossed, we have a big new launch coming up in a couple of weeks, so please uh, follow us on Twitter. I have a shameless, shameless plug here for sure. Um, and just to give you a little anecdote here, this is from um, Joel Camargo. He was uh, working on the sales floor at AT&T when he got the apprenticeship at Pandora. Um, and he says, I went from serving burgers and beers as a server or bartender to serving mortgages in the bank industry. And now I'm serving up Amazon, uh, amazing Android apps. So I killed the line there, huh? Um, so yeah, we're really proud of Joel and the other, uh, the other apprentices that have come through. 95% of our apprentices have converted. 100% um, retention, they're all still at their uh, same companies. And the folks have tripled um, their salaries. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a competitive process, okay? The, to get an apprenticeship um, through on-ramp and at these companies. So you're gonna have to dig in and keep trying, okay? If you get a no, just keep going at it. So that is a little bit about me and where I work and what I'm doing, but that's not what you're here for. Um, you're here to learn about apprenticeships. Um, and maybe you know about it, maybe you don't. I'm just gonna give a little overview that apprenticeships are earn and learn programs. So they combine formal learning with on the job training experiences. So the candidate is gonna receive training and mentorship, you know, that you need to develop uh, your, in your targeted areas. And you're also gonna develop soft skills to prepare you for success. 
um, and you're guided and supported by an advanced expert in the work. And most important, you earn a wage during this program and you have the opportunity to convert to full-time work. Um, the apprentices in the tech, apprenticeships specifically in the tech space can range from um, four months all the way up to two years plus. Um, and so just be aware, you know, of where you are in life and what you need and what you can do. There are so many different kinds of apprenticeships. Okay, the big difference, I would say, are registered apprenticeships, um, which is basically where you have to complete a certain number of hours. And at the end, you receive a certification or a credit. So this is training that's been looked at and reviewed by boards at the state level or at the federal level, so that then you can walk away with an actual certificate or credit and something to your name. And then there's also non-registered apprenticeships, right? So it's just companies and, and third parties are coming up with curriculum and training um, to set up these apprenticeships. So you, we can have a debate all day long about whether you should go after a registered apprenticeship or a non-registered apprenticeship. I'm not gonna answer that for you. Um, that's, that, that is a, a personal thing for you. Um, the thing you know, that I think is specific to the tech industry is that once you get in right, to a job, it's way easier to move and shake and move to different positions in different companies. That's not necessarily the case in other industries. Um, so I think that the registered apprenticeship is super important in other industries and in tech, maybe it doesn't hold um, as much weight or isn't completely necessary, but it's definitely something that you should look at and um, consider for yourself. So the other piece is there are different programs, right? So uh, some folks come in and they say, I have zero experience. I don't know how to do any design and I'm trying to get into UX. I don't know how to code anything. Um, and there are apprenticeships that help you build from zero all the way up, right? And then there are apprenticeships that where you actually do need some experience. Um, so maybe you've been coding on your own for six months or maybe you've been doing sales for six months or a year and then you can get into an apprenticeship. Um, so just be aware when you're applying and the different ones, you know, is this zero experience or do you need to have um, some work under your belt in some way? And that can be self-taught, um, that can be a boot camp, and that can be, you know, in an opera world, wherever you're you're getting these skills. Um, and then the other piece is what, so what kind of careers, right? I see folks saying, um, okay, I'm not looking in software engineering, so you can get an apprenticeship in digital marketing, in sales, and user experience design in HR, in data, in cybersecurity, in IT. Um, so there are just so many different options for you um, to get in and to explore. So, and keep uh, the questions coming. The fabulous Jennifer Tashif will be compiling them. Um, I appreciate that. So as far as the benefits, I'll get to those at the end, I promise. We have about 10 to 15 minutes to do that. Um, as far as the benefits of an apprenticeship, and this goes, you know, this is a benefit to the companies, this is also a benefit um, to individuals and communities. So first and foremost, and here we are today, of course, at Pequeria, we have to talk about um, diversity and inclusion. So you all know, you know, the diversity numbers are abysmal um, and the tech companies are feeling a lot of pressure, you know, from their employees, from society, from customers to do better. And they have a lot of open positions and not um, a lot of underrepresented team members either in the entry level and in the mid level, um, even worse. So when companies um, invest in the development of these employees, they're saying, okay, let, let's bring in these apprentices, right? And after a few years, these underrepresented folks are actually gonna end up being our managers that we want at these mid levels. Um, so it's a really good investment on their end and also in, in investing in us folks. Um, the other part is highly being getting highly motivated and productive untapped candidates. Right. These are folks. Um, and here we are. Right. We're people that we're going to stay longer in a position because we've worked really hard to transition from something else into this job. We're career transitioners. So we have great work. I think we know what it takes. This isn't our first job um, and we know how to take advantage of opportunities. And now these companies have access to a whole new talent pool um, that they didn't have access to before or they were they weren't looking um, for potential. And it also uh, provides opportunities. So the current employees that are there, they get to mentor, they get to train, they have leadership opportunities, and then they're feeling better about and more motivated to work and feeling better about their company investing in folks. Um, the other part is that now companies get to target more than college grads. So we're talking about, there's a lot of talk about early talent um, in tech. 
So early talent, a lot of the time, are just college grads, right? But that's not what we're looking for here. Um, specifically, they can. Um, but unlike internships, you know, where college students are targeted and the recruiting window is, okay, just in the summer or that we can only really get them at graduation or during their breaks. Um, the nice part is with apprenticeships, you can recruit folks that are, are all times of the year and over and over again. Um, you don't have to be, be on this calendar schedule. And the other piece that's really great about an apprenticeship is that folks then don't have to incur student loan, right? You don't have to have your college degree or maybe you um, didn't complete college and you don't want to be penalized for that, right? So a lot of apprentices, apprenticeships, um, you actually do not need your college degree to, um, to get the apprenticeship there, which is great and opens up a lot of doors. Um, and the last piece really is this is a work force development issue and op uh, economic opportunity issue. Um, so we know tech companies move into communities, they uproot folks, they disrupt um, communities, they price folks out. And actually these apprenticeships give people the opportunity to actually live in these communities, the opportunity to work in these companies um, and get to reap the benefits too of a company coming in um, and boosting their economy, economy and hopefully folks being able to uh, pay their rent and other things. But we, we can get into that, that, that debate later for sure. Um, and the other piece is what we're seeing across the industry is that employer sponsored training has really decreased um, and needs to be brought back up. So we need to make sure we're investing in that. Okay. Now, why is this a secret? What is going on um, here with apprenticeships? And why don't we know what is happening? This should absolutely not be a secret at all. Um, first and foremost, it's they're usually publicized during a short time frame, right? So maybe the application is only open for two weeks um, and that's it. So that's when you hear about it, it's two weeks of the year um, is when it's being put out there when the application is open. The other part is that partners are running a lot of these programs, right? So for example, OnRamp, um, we're running the program for Twitch, Pandora and Blend. So Twitch, Pandora and Blend are not putting this on blast everywhere um, on their websites, you know, we are. Um, but most people know Twitch, Pandora, and Blend, but they don't know OnRamp. Um, so a lot of these third parties that are smaller that you're not aware of are running these programs and they're advertising them, but you don't know that because you're not hepped into that network. Um, so it's important to start figuring out who are these third parties and who's really doing this so you can keep tabs um, on these companies. The other part around these opportunities is that they have different names. It's like, man, you can't even Google just apprenticeship because folks um, want to come up with different names for for their program. So it can be called an academy. Um, that's the Adobe one, right? So if you're looking for their apprenticeship, that's what it's called. Then a returnship. Um, and a returnship actually is for folks who have been out of work, um, like caregivers mainly, who have been out of paid work for a year and then are coming, they're returning back to work. So, you know, mine wasn't officially a returnship, but I was out of work for three years, so unofficially. Um, this is my returnship. And then they're also called co-ops. And then, and I just saw one last week, I went to a conference and I learned that a company is naming their apprenticeship an enableship, which is basically a sales um, apprenticeship if you're interested in getting in that. So the question is here, here's the time for your screenshot, y'all. Um, where can you find apprenticeships? Okay, so which companies are hosting them? Now, if you're looking at, um, in software engineering, Okay, specifically, uh, there's a really great website out there. And if you're in the Bay Area and they're going to be expanding to other areas, um, apprenticeship.io is the way to go. They have a ton um, of, they have some great maps there where you can see where the different um, apprentices are popping up everywhere. And uh, some apprenticeships are, are, are fully remote. So just be aware of that, some are not. Um, so you might want to check that out even if you don't live in the Bay. And then of course, my shameless plug for OnRamp, um, that we work for with Twitch, Blend, Pandora, and fingers crossed, uh, more to be announced next week. Um, and then some other companies that run their own, we've got LinkedIn, Twitter, Intuit, Airbnb, Asana, all of those are, are in the mix. Um, then when you're looking at different positions, so you need to check out the Department of Labor. Um, the federal government, man, is pouring billions of dollars into apprenticeships. And that's billions with a B in case uh, you didn't catch me there. So please check out um, the Department of Labor and what they're doing, tech or not. Um, they are investing so much money in apprenticeships right now. 
Uh, Microsoft has one of the longest running um, apprenticeships. You know, if you want to get into business program manager, cybersecurity, user experience, design, whatever it is, uh, Adobe, IBM. So you can see there, you all can read um, on that part. Then as far as specific demographics, so there are different apprenticeships that are targeted for different folks. So for example, um, I talked about the returnships. Those are for caregivers. So you need to check out um, that website there with Path Forward. They have an extensive, extensive list of people they partner with. But then if you scroll down some, they're all the returnships um, in the country that they're aware of. So that is a huge, huge one if you're trying to get back into work. Um, they're programmed for folks who were formerly incarcerated. So if you were formerly incarcerated or if you know somebody who was, um, there's a next chapter program that's run at Slack, Zoom, and Dropbox. And then um, there's also vets and spouses of um, the vet to Amazon that you can check out um, some, an apprenticeship program there. And then the third party partners, here they are folks. These are the ones to know about who are running a ton of apprenticeships. Um, so there's certainly us, of course. Then there's Bitwise Industries. They're actually training facilities in Central California. It's awesome Latina lesbian who started that. Um, company and they just opened one in Ohio, CompTIA, Multiverse Catalyte out of Baltimore, Vendition for Sales, and Co-op Careers. So that is that. And now the main question, how do you land an apprenticeship? And really this is applicable not just to the apprenticeship, um, but really if you're trying to break into tech, um, this is, you know, these are, are, are the golden nuggets um, that I sourced talking to folks. And so the first and foremost, y'all, is you need to soul search, okay? You need to make sure this is something that you really wanna do. You know, when you are talking to people in interviews, they need to feel your passion. They need to know like, no, this is what I wanna do. And I'm making this career change because of this reason. And it's, you know, it's you're speaking from your soul and from your heart um, that really resonates with people. And you're gonna be making a major, major time commitment to training and learning new skills. So make sure you love it and make sure that it's something that you want to do. Um, and if you're trying to figure out how do you soul search, just Google some coaching activities. You know, having a coach is expensive. I didn't have one. I had friends who had coaches. I said, send me the activities and what you do with your coach. You know, and I was Googling them and trying to decide what it is that I wanted to do um, in my returnship. And the next thing is mapping out your skills. So think about, all right, what is this job? What does it really entail? What is in this job announcement? Who are the folks that have these jobs now? What positions were they in before? What skills do they have? And then really thinking about what are your transferable skills? Because you have a ton, okay? Do not sell yourself short. Do not say, no, I don't have, yes, you do have transferable skills. Figure them out, connect the dots, and then connect the language to make sure that it matches that job description um, that you're looking at. And then think about, all right, you're not gonna have all the skills. Clearly you're transitioning in. There's so much to learn, it's so exciting. Um, so think, think about what is it, what are these skills you need to acquire? Where can you learn them? I think you acquire, there's so much stuff out there for free right now to upskill and train um, yourself. And the next piece to network, all right? Right now, get out there, put, put it in the chat, please. Okay, during this, um, during Tequeria, I know it's nerve wracking, but hit that networking button there with the, with the holding hands. All right, get in there, talk to people. You never know who you're gonna meet. And you know what, it's lower stakes now. So get in there, practice, practice, practice. And as you do it more, you'll get more comfortable, but ask for help and get out there. Put the pride aside. As I said, you're not gonna be a superhero. Um, get on the Slack channel. First of all, the Tequeria Slack channel is amazing. Um, there's so many jobs listed on there. Latinas in tech has a really good one. Any affinity group, right, out in tech, um there's just i'm telling you whatever affinity group you're related to get out there find the slack channel even you know i know facebook's a little dated but there's some decent facebook groups too but the slack channels are really it people are posting so many jobs um on them and remember you're going to be ignored a lot so it's okay that's just part of it all right um and people love to talk about themselves you saw i talked about myself a little bit today um ask them their story see how they got there and then find yourself that mentor, that sponsor. Once again, uh, thank you, Jennifer Tasha, my mentor, my sponsor, <laughs> um, who's there in the crowd. So the next piece for you, other tips um, before we wrap up and get into the Q&A in here, 
So you need to tell your story, okay? The elevator pitch is real. Um, and it can't be the same one, okay? If you're talking to one company and they have a completely different mission than another one, we'll figure out how do you modify your, your elevator pitch a little bit, just a little bit here and there with what resonates with you. And you need to practice it, practice in the mirror, practice with your friends, practice everywhere. Um, it's also a, a super nerve wracking thing to introduce yourself or why do you wanna do this job? Or tell us about your experience. Weave in your story in there, folks, okay? It's really important. Um, and your LinkedIn, everybody is looking at it, okay? Everybody's looking at your LinkedIn. So please, clean it up. Um, I need to clean my own up. I'm being a hypocrite right now. But, and make it aspirational, okay? You need to make sure that you have your aspirational goals in there, not with just what you did, and translate it so that it makes sense into what you're trying to get into. Um, the other piece is you're going to learn, learn, and learn, and learn. And the growth mindset, right? They love talking about it in tech. It's funny at Girls Inc. We used to train on the growth mindset many, many years ago. So it's basically the idea that you weren't born smart and with all the skills, that you actually have to work at it and learn it. Um, and your brain is a muscle, and you can acquire all of these skills that you don't know how to do things yet, right? And the challenges and failures are opportunities to learn and develop skills. So having that mindset um, is really key. And the jargon, y'all, you know, I feel like, you know, I, I speak English and Spanish, but I'm learning tech now, right? This is a whole new language that I'm learning. Um, and there's so much jargon out there. It can be so confusing, but, you know, keep a running list of what are all the things you hear and you're like, what is that that you need to get out there um, and, and learn these new words, these new vocab words that change all the time. And it's okay. You know, I think sometimes they make it confusing on purpose um, or to set themselves apart or to feel special. So just, you're all right. Keep keep looking up the words. If you feel comfortable with somebody and it's a safe space to ask them, then ask them, what the heck does that mean? Um, but if not, you know, you know who your audience is. The other piece is really keep your head up. Okay. The the job search, the apprenticeship search, trying to break in, trying to transition is just, man, it's brutal. Okay. It takes a toll on your self-esteem, on your mental health. It is just, it's so hard. Um so remember, please, to, to take care of yourself, especially we know during this pandemic, who's not talking about self-care? So please take care of yourself. Um, make sure that, that you're doing yourself right. Um, remind yourself why you're fabulous, okay? If you need to put post-its ups on your mirror during your interviews or whatever it is, to remind yourself to call that friend who's gonna pump you up um, when you need it, you do that. But do whatever you need to do to remind yourself not to lose um, who you are and learn from your rejection and don't take it personally, okay? There are a hundred reasons why they could have said no to you and chances are it doesn't have anything to do with you. Maybe they already had the position for somebody in mind and they just had to post it or you were perfect for it. You know, you just, you have no idea. So don't take it personally, keep it pushing, okay? And you only need one yes, y'all, you only need one. So don't let them get you down, you're gonna work it out. So. The tech industry needs you, okay? Your voice needs to be in the mix and see, sip, whether, yes, rejection is redirection. Thank you, um, Marilyn or Marilyn. I don't know how you pronounce your name. I'll say both. So um, if you want to connect, please. Um, I'm the only Odette Nemes, so it's easy to find me on LinkedIn. Um, you can follow on ramp.io um, on Twitter. And we're going to get into questions now. Here we go. So I see here, um, what's the best step for someone trying to transition into tech? And the other piece that people can put in the chat too, some other strategies um, that they've done. I just named a few, but what are some strategies? What are you all doing to get into tech? Because um, I'm sure there's a lot of knowledge here in this space and folks have been trying different things that have been helpful and not helpful. So go ahead and you can help me out with this question. What's the best first step for someone trying to transition into tech and how can we stand out? Um, I think really the referrals really and getting to know people um, and nowadays is the only way to get in. There's so many people applying for jobs and you just need to know somebody. You don't need to, but it's gonna really help you stand out if your application gets flagged because chances are if it's not flagged, it's not your referral, it might not even get rid. And you put so much time um, into putting those applications together and then they might not get rid, right? At OnRamp, we read every single application, um, but that's just not the case, you know, in so many uh, other places. So any other points there for folks for the first step? 
um, I think really that soul searching is really the key. You need to really think about what is it that you want to do? Why is it that you want to do this? And dig in and you, you can make it happen. Um, another question, are there non-technical apprenticeships? Do people need to hear more about that? Um, for sure, there are absolutely non-technical apprenticeships. And if you mean by non-technical, not in tech, yes, there are apprenticeships all over the country in so many different industries um, that you can get into and look up through the Department of Labor. Um, I didn't mention Aon and Accenture. They started doing um, an apprenticeship program in Chicago and they're branching out all over the country. They're really um, investing in that a lot too. So um, is on-ramp or apprenticeships in general the same as a boot camp? So they're not, it's a good question. Or a certification program like Google? This is a great question. Um, so apprenticeships are not like boot camps. So you go to a boot camp um, to learn different skills, right? So maybe you're gonna go to a boot camp um, in, to be a full stack engineer and you're there, you're training, um, for a few months, you're learning all the skills and then you have all the skills, but, or some of the skills, right? But then you're still missing, um, the job, right? So the apprenticeship is helps to bridge that gap. So the apprenticeship is basically where you're still learning skills, but you're at a specific company. Um, and then you can convert into a full-time employee at that company. So you can look at the apprenticeship as an add-on, um, to the boot camp and an add-on to a certification program. Um, and somebody said, are the slides available? Yes. So you're a little late to the party. That's usually me. I couldn't be late to the party today, but, um, it's okay to be late to the party. I will sh share the slides. Um, I just started tweeting, so you can look me up on Twitter. Um, it'll, that name is just my first and last name and I'll share the slides there for you all. Um, so you can have this and. Let's see here. Do you know of any programs for people wanting to break into product management for a couple of years um, out of college? That's a good question. I would have to dig in a little bit more to those. Um, in some of the slides I did share, I'm not sure who has a product management specific program, but um, I will look into that for sure. Um, here we go. Another one. How should we value ourselves when pivoting into a new industry or career? I want to put that out into the chat too. So folks, how are you valuing yourselves when pivoting into a new industry or career? Um, you have to remember that you have a lot of skills. You know, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. You're acquiring a lot of skills. You're not able, if you're able to be successful in your job, um, you're acquiring a lot of skills and you just have to rename them, right? Like, for example, when I was at Girls Inc. and I was working, trying to get girls to sign up for the programs or trying to get donors to donate, I was doing sales, right? I was telling them, no, you need to sign up for this. That is what you're trying to do when you're in tech, right? I'm trying to sell apprenticeships now. Before I was trying to sell girls in and get people into that program. Maybe you're selling on like um, Joel on an AT&T floor, right? There's so many different things that can transfer. Maybe you are organizing folks on a team. Maybe you're working in a restaurant, you're a manager and you're trying to organize your team and really you are doing some program management there and making sure that you're supervising and supporting folks. There's so many different skills um, that you're acquiring. So Yes, Mario, the transition into sales is real. You should check out that enableship program at Seismic that they just launched. They're really investing in sales there. Um, let's see here. Do I have resources for internships? I know apprenticeships often don't take people in school. I attend a Hispanic serving institution. Great, don't be sad about that. Um, that you, congratulations and Yes, there are so many internships out there. First of all, there are way more internships than apprenticeships. I'm trying to change that, you know, in my role, in my position here. Um, but I, I haven't specifically looked at, you know, what is one resource that shares? Does anybody out there have anything um, that knows where all the internships are um, in tech? But there are so many, I wouldn't even know where to start. So maybe you can begin with what are some companies you're interested in? Um, and see if they have an internship, chances are they do. If it's a, a decent style company, I would say like over mm, 500 employees, chances are that is that they're going to have um, an internship. So check that out. Let's see here. Um, 
what are the next batches of apprenticeships for on ramp? Um, so we're waiting for a contract to sign, so I can't release that information. All I can say to you is to follow us on Twitter. Um, but I, I would say that every company that we work with wants to do it again. Um, so the folks that we've worked with, chances are they'll be doing it again. And then we we should have a very exciting um, new launch coming up. So keep an eye out for uh, for uh, more positions. So that would be great. Um, any other questions out there? Should I put my experience as a bartender on my resume? I feel as if I'm also in the tech industry. That's a good question, Vanessa. Um, you know, it's interesting. There are so many skills. It, it really depends on um, how you how you present it, right? How are you presenting the skills that you are acquiring? Um, and is it relevant to the job that you're applying for? So look, if there's a bullet there, that's talking about being able to work with teammates, um, then yeah, being able to, if you're working in sales, customer success, dealing with challenging situations, then that's absolutely something that is relevant. Um, but really the only things on your resume need to be on there is what is relevant. And if you can explain to somebody how that skill is transferable and how it's relevant, then put it on your resume. Okay. Any other questions that we have here? I'm trying to keep up with this chat, but it is happening. The networking is really happening here. Mm. Let's see here. And there are people here. I don't know what this moderation panel is. Sorry, y'all. I'm still learning. Um, Pamela, Melissa, hey, let's see. I don't know if they get in or what. Let me try while we're at it. Here we go, another question. How has your experience been as someone who's been a part of the LGBTQ community? I recently came out of the closet last year at 32 years young. First of all, felicidades, that's amazing um, to come out of the closet at 32 years young, I'm proud of you. Um, how has my experience been? For me, um, I've just, I have been out about it from the jump. It's on my resume, right? I've worked at a Latino LGBT organization. Um, so that's how I'm out there. I'm out on LinkedIn. Um, I'm out on Twitter. And for me, I see it as if I can't be out in your company, then I don't want to work at your company. So um, I put it out there because it's a way that I will self-select. If, if people look at my resume and they say, ooh, she's Latina or, ooh, she's, uh, she's queer, you know, then I don't wanna work for you anyway. Um, and that's not the kind of space that I wanna be in every day. So that's the thing, it has been, I have made it a point to put it out there so that then um, I know I'm gonna be in a safe space and that I can be myself at work. So I know not everybody's there, I've been out for a while. So just, you know, try to feel them out and, and ask questions about it and see if they have uh, an employee resource group or see if there are other queer folks um, there or see what kind of events they're sponsoring if they're trying to target LGBTQ folks. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're friendly, but they're trying on paper, right? Um, let's see here. How can you explain more about the goals on LinkedIn and how do we get a sponsor? Oh, good question. Can folks in the um, chat Please, if you've um, gotten a sponsor, if you can put in there some tips on getting a sponsor, that would be great. Um, how do we get a sponsor? I mean, this has to be genuine, right? You can't just be like, will you be my sponsor? Um, it has to be somebody who, you know, has your back, who's going to advocate for you, um, who you have a, a real relationship with. Um, so I think that, you know, if you're starting fresh with somebody, it needs to be about getting to know them, building a relationship, um, and really seeing, you know, do they have the time? Do they have the energy? Are they interested in this? Some people do, some people don't. You'll see, I mean, I'm always surprised in, in Tequeria and all these communities, how folks are like, yeah, reach out if you wanna, um, if you want support. Um, some people really love this. They love taking folks under their wing and others don't. Um, so you'll be able to tell pretty quickly what's going on for you there, but preferably, you know, folks are already in your network and in your community. Um, they can support you and if not, then, you know, start going to events, um, going to meetup groups. You need, you just need to put yourself out there. It's super uncomfortable, but um, you need to do it. And explain more about the goals on LinkedIn. Um, I think, yeah, you have to put that 
what what it is. I mean, maybe you're training in it, maybe you're in a boot camp, maybe you're doing some um, some projects on your own, or you're doing some training, you're taking some courses, or you're working on some certifications. All of those things um, need to be on your LinkedIn profile and what it is that you want to be doing and, and flat out putting out there what kind of jobs um, that you're looking for. Anything else? Yes, yeah, somebody said that they have their, back to the LGBTQ question, that they have their pronouns on LinkedIn and in my email signature, same here, right? Um, in my Zoom, everywhere, I try to put she, hers, and yeah, I didn't even say it in the beginning, I did have it on the first slide. Um, yeah, just to get out there to let know, and you can tell how people react um, pretty easily. All right, any final questions before we wrap up here? It has been fabulous. I just want to say um, thank you so much. Uh, it's just been a privilege. You know, this journey for me whew, um, has been hard. It's been trying. It has not been easy. Yeah, I'm sitting here. I'm tearing up now. Um, smiling and excited to share with you all. But it was really hard, y'all. It was really, really hard um, and took a lot of work. And, you know, just not quitting and taking all those no's and, re and remember who I am. And you know, my blood and my people and my history and that I can do it. So just, you know, don't give up on yourselves um, and make sure you keep pushing. And uh, maybe someday you will be, you know, sharing your presentation too on how to get into tech. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>